what's going on everyone so today we're going to do more of like a podcast style video that'd be interesting to talk about different topics of columbia uh so broad topics like dating in columbia also like the drugging thing that's going on right now with the scopamine where like eight foreigners have gotten killed in the last two months well that was last year we're into february now um and yeah they're like topics we're going to kind of like I guess ask each other questions because we don't have like an actual like podcast guest. So yeah, we'll be talking about like a wide range of subjects. Uh, we're coming at you from a random jungle in Columbia. We're here with the uh, gorilla. <laughs> we joined forces with the gorilla. I changed my position on Patreon. We're we're not <laughs> Patreon followers. So yeah. So I guess yeah, let's get started with our first topic sub subject and I think this is one that you know everyone wants to know but not many people talk about it um, and that's dating in Colombia mm -hmm. um, yeah I mean obviously like a lot of foreigners come here for that mm -hmm. um, I would say less now like so it used to be that five ten years ago is a lot of like sexual tourism um, now there's more families coming, women coming, um, but there's still men that come to, and not necessarily like sexual tourism, like for prostitutes, but, um, to live and yeah, date, you know, wherever you live, you're going to date. Yeah. So yeah, let's get into that subject and I guess maybe like where foreigners go wrong, where foreigners should look more at maybe not using the apps yeah um and this will also lead into our next topic of uh foreigners getting killed yeah by the scope mean mm -hmm. yeah well a lot of people asked me and asked us like how did we meet and like you just mentioned like having being careful with the apps but we actually met mm -hmm. on bumble yeah. so so yeah we like met on we met on bumble mm -hmm. um from what I have like seen, most have been on Tinder. Uh, from when I was like using those apps, the difference between like Tinder and Bumble was like pretty big. Like Tinder had like all like the the barrio girls that you know the girls that <laughs> would drug you, like a girl from from Bejo, just like yeah, you know, lower class girls, I guess. I mean, you know, yeah. I mean, not not necessarily that, but I think when when I was using Bumble, like this is three years ago, um, Bumble was more like a platform where like the girl talked to the guy, and like mm -hmm. it has it had more restrictions, so you were able to see a little bit more like who the person was because you could like select things from the personality or things that you didn't like. Yeah. But like what I want to talk about mainly and ask you too, because you're a foreigner, you're someone that comes from another country. And it is like, how do you like actually identify someone that you want to be with, right? Because a lot of foreigners are coming here and of course they want one type of experience, but others, as you were mentioning, they just want this experience of like having a life here, like, you know, have a long-term relationship mm -hmm. because like, that's not only for a foreigner goal, like that's a person's like life goal, right? To meet mm -hmm. someone and maybe start, yeah, like a relationship and eventually a family. So how, like, how did you like filter the girls that you were talking to? Right. Because they, like, they are saying like, oh, foreigners are coming here and they are getting drugged and killed, but it is their fault because they are just like not filtering or you can like identify pretty, pretty easy. Who's the girl that's going to drug yeah. you. So what, like, where were you, yeah. what were your filters there? I mean, I would say it's kind of hard, but you just have to use your judgment. Like, don't mm -hmm. be stupid. Um, but I also want to point out, like, that blaming the gringos, that's because that's what a lot of the leaders are doing right now. Like, the mayor of Medellin, he put a statement out that basically, like, it was the foreigner's fault. Um, there really shouldn't be this problem here in, in Colombia. Mm -hmm. Like, I think it's really, like, a Colombia problem. Like, you don't hear about it, at least to the magnitude that you do in Colombia and especially Medellin. Mm -hmm. So it's really, I would say it's the fault of 
you know, the people first mm -hmm. here. I mean, obviously it's just a few bad apples that make everyone look bad. Mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, they need to address more of the crime and try to crack down on that more, which I think they are finally starting to with the new mayor. But yeah, they shouldn't be blaming gringos first. Like obviously gringos should be a little bit smarter and not, you know, dumb and like, you know, there's just a certain type of girl that, or like things that happen during that first encounter that you should, I think, recognize to an extent. But also that drug is pretty hard to see what's, you know, who's going to be using it if they're using it. Like, because it's like a, a magic potion, basically. Like, they just slip it in your drink. Yo, it, I mean, it, so I mean, it, it could be a, a normal night out. So I guess when I say like gringos being stupid, it, it could just be like a normal night out too. Um, so yeah, it's just really hard to identify those situations. Yeah, it is hard. And it's, I feel it's harder for foreigners because they are not used to like, they're not used to the bad. I feel like yeah. I remember when we yeah. started doing business that mm -hmm. many things happened to us and we were not like prevented or thinking about mm -hmm. like bad things happening. I feel it's yeah. the same with this situation. Yeah, like, now that I've been living here for almost six years now, I'm always thinking about like the worst case scenario, basically like in every business situation, transaction, like everything now. I'm like thinking of, mm -hmm. I'm basically like thinking the other person's gonna scam me. Uh, that's what you have to do. Like uh, always think the worst possible case scenario and like try to pr protect yourself as much as possible. Mm -hmm. um, and you have to do that with dating too. Just think of the worst case scenario and try to prevent um, anything bad happening. Yeah, exactly. And it's also because for like, if you come from the US, it's a different culture. It's just like when we go yeah. out to the street, like because I'm Colombian, I was born, raised here. So I'm always prevented everywhere we go. So I'm always having like, I'm aware of my stuff. I'm always mm -hmm. like aware of my surroundings versus you. You're all, like, when we travel, and, you're like, oh, yeah. my bag is over there. I know it's going to be safe. I just don't have that mentality. And I feel like if you're coming here and you want to date or if you want to yeah. do business or whatever, you just have to switch your mind and just like know that things yeah. here work differently. People are different and they have different values too. Yeah. And it depends where you come from in the US too. Like, I think if you come from, especially now, today, a big city in the US, like people are more like on the guard. But yeah, I mean, I grew up in Midwest and um, yeah, the values there are totally different. And uh, you don't, yeah, you don't have to watch your back. You can leave your car unlocked. Um, your house. Just totally different, <laughs> you know, at atmosphere there. Um, yeah, I understand probably, you know, New York, Miami, LA, those cities, um, you always kind of be, got to be on guard a little bit. Uh, but it, I mean, it's still not to the extent that you have to be on guard here in Colombia. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I don't think that's something that any foreigner will really like understand. Like, like you, like growing up here, you, you grew up with that. So it's kind of like always in the back of your mind, I think. People like that grew up here. Yeah, yeah. Definitely. But at the end, like if you were going to use these apps, like you can find good people like you did. Yeah. I, I, yeah. I'm think, I think I'm a good, good person, yeah. but also like be aware, like there are some things of common sense. Like if the girl is just messaging you like, hey, my love, yeah. come here. I want I love you like right away. It's like not normal. Yeah, that's a huge red flag. And mm -hmm. I mean, men think with their with their head, not all right. Sorry. Men don't think with their head when it comes to women and, and love. So like, you know, a friend of ours, like he showed me his, or showed you mm -hmm. his Tinder profile yeah. and the messages he was getting. And the girls were like, yeah, like, the oh, girls were, they... were like, oh, like the first message, like, oh, papacito, mi amor, yeah. my love, come here. I want to love you, blah, blah, blah. Like that's the girl, you know, it's not a normal girl. Yeah, that's what you got to watch out for those, yeah. those ones yeah. so yeah just use common sense if it seems too good to be true it probably is yeah and we are more like colombian women were warmer but it definitely not not, not to not that, that extent exactly yeah mm -hmm. yeah and also another thing that i notice and or we both notice that 
I don't really understand. Like, so there's like the tourism that comes to Colombia that they're just interested in like a hookup and like prostitutes, but there's also the people that come here to live. Maybe it's like a month, three months, six months that are more like into dating. Um, but yeah, something that we notice is like a lot of gringos, like they're always with like barrio girls, you know, like a lot of our friends are, I just, I don't know why <laughs> they can't find better women. But yeah. I mean, I think foreigners, like they need to look for better quality women mm -hmm. because a lot of times we, like, I know some friends and see other foreigners you see them in the mall and they're with like um i mean girls with like tattoos everywhere like just you know borrow goes and i guess for me i think the better way to meet girls here is in person mm -hmm. and off apps because like on the apps you, you're gonna see a lot of like girls like that you know and like how do you go and meet someone like in person because we met on Bumble, yeah. but I haven't dated for a while, but I don't know how it would be to to meet someone like, or they introduce you know. to someone. Or yeah, I suppose like have mutual friend groups where you like, you know, get invited into a group of friends and maybe you meet someone that way. Um, yeah, it could be anywhere in public, I guess. Like, yeah, it's I guess that's kind of hard to do, but yeah or also if it's like um through an app like make sure the girl is educated mm -hmm. uh, and that you can filter it really well or if you're going out with her like make sure to tell a friend like i, I remember when i was using the apps like i used to tell my friends mm -hmm. like hey i'm gonna be with this guy here here at this time we're gonna be at this restaurant we're gonna be doing this um so like be aware like or if i call you like please be available to pick me up or something like that yeah which like yeah and i would say it's it probably only happens like 0 0.01 0 0.001 percent of encounters so you know more likely than not you're not gonna have to worry about this and like to go back to what you were saying about like finding quality people i think also like you attract what you are mm -hmm. so at the end like for me it's like if you want to attract a good partner or if you're willing to date someone here just be an amazing person, yeah, take care exactly. of yourself and be in the right places. Like if you want to find like, I don't know, a yeah. fit girl, like then you yourself go to the gym, be in the right places. I don't feel finding a, you're not going to find a good girl like at the bars or for me, like in my opinion, yeah. in the bars or at night or in these parties that they do, like that are really yeah. popular, that, that they do these parties with girls. You know, like the ones that were banned, yeah. that they do these yeah. parties with these girls that go to a place to meet foreigners. Like, um, yeah, I just feel like you, you, you're gonna eventually attract the right person for you, depending on your standards first, mm. and also the the type of energy that you're projecting. That's yeah. my opinion. Yeah, I mean, I would say be a good person, learn Spanish too, because the proficiency of Spanish is super low in Colombia. So, like, it's gonna be hard to uh, talk to someone in. At least, I guess, to have like a long-term relationship. For me, like you have to speak the same language. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, like how are you going to form like a long-lasting bond uh, mm -hmm. without speaking the same language? I mean, you, you do see so many foreigners though, like that they don't know any Spanish and like they're with like a girl that knows zero Spanish. And I mean, they're dating, and I don't know. I would, I'd say normally it doesn't work out, but there are some that. <laughs> that do work out somehow I, I don't know how they make it work but another thing that you have to take into account is like your goals like what are your goals like with a relationship because some people just come here and they want to like hang out and have fun mm. uh, but like in your case i don't know we, we've had a long relationship so uh, i don't know till which point like you knew that you wanted a long-term relationship or you just were not looking for it uh, because that's yeah. gonna like make sense at the end like yeah so that's why i was saying like a lot of um there's like a different kind of tourist like some that just come for prostitutes some that come for uh long-term relationship i would say like before it wasn't that i wasn't looking for it um and yeah i think this is gonna open like a whole new 
can of worms. <laughs> uh, yeah, it wasn't that I was like looking for it, but yeah, this is a whole nother topic that I think in Medellin, it's extremely, extremely difficult to find a long-term partner and like relationship. I see so few, so few foreigners that can actually make it work with a Pisces, someone from Medellin. Uh, for some reason, I just, you don't see them work out long-term ever versus like all my almost all my friends are dating if they're dating a colombian it's from someone from like bogota or some other region in colombia i think pisces just have such like a i don't know like a closed culture kind of like what, what's the term for that closed like that they're really not even like interested in dating foreigners mm -hmm. yeah um you get that less in the barrios, but I would say middle to upper class uh, Columbus and especially Pisces uh, have like zero interest in dating foreigners. Yeah, yeah, I've heard that from people that I've talked to, like girls that I've talked to. They just don't want to date foreigners. Mm -hmm. They are not interested. They just don't like them. And also the language barrier, like even here, people like from middle to higher classes they don't speak English. So mm. women are just not interested in that. And I feel also like this is kind of funny, but for women here and Latinos, especially our culture, we are a sweet talk culture. Yeah. Uh, so like women like guys like talking to them and telling her them things. And I think that's the part where th there's just not a click between yeah. like foreigners but, and people here. But again, it's is mostly in this region because yeah. you see a lot more race relationships in say people from Bogota, Cali, oh, yeah, definitely. you know, other regions. Mm -hmm. uh, it's just I, so rarely, and I, I live here so that you think that, you know, we know more people that mm -hmm. um, are dating, you know, people from Medellin, Pisces, or yeah, have had a relationship with them, mm -hmm. uh, but it's, it's yeah. almost non-existent. Yeah, it's just like they like being with each other. And I, I've had a lot of people tell me this. They just like being between each other because they mm -hmm. like their way, their culture is and how they act and behave and how relationships work. Yeah. So, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah it's kind of, I mean, same, they don't, they don't, they're like, what's the word in Spanish? They're regionalistas. Regionalistas. Yeah. Uh -huh. They don't like other regions in Colombia. They don't like other countries outside of Colombia. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, I mean, they have a great, amazing place. It's beautiful, mm -hmm. like, Weather is incredible. Nature is, you know, the biodiversity. Um, and yeah, they, they like they like their their land, I guess. And yeah. <laughs> they don't. Which is good. Yeah. I mean, good and bad. Um, yeah. And yeah, I mean, at the end, like every relationship just needs work. We've had to adjust to many things. Mm. Um, like I've had to adjust a lot of things and you've had to like welcome a lot of things that I do um, but I just feel like people from here they just have such an established and closed mind mm -hmm. uh, that they just don't welcome anything anyone else like and on the surface yes but not on the deep or like deeper yeah. side of connections like for example I haven't been able to make a, that I'm from another region of Colombia and I moved here, but I haven't been able to make that many friends or like connections. Just I think because of that, it's not only yeah. like um, no, like love relationships, but also like in relationships in general. Well, the last question I wanted to like related to this, like because we're talking about that, is like if we could live anywhere else in Colombia besides Medellin. Yeah, that's a good question. Mm -hmm. um, so we've been to Santa Marta. Yeah. I've been to Bogota. Mm -hmm. um, outside of that, like, there are, like, a lot of other great cities mm -hmm. that I think I would like, but I guess I haven't been, so I can't comment on, like, mm -hmm. Cali, mm -hmm. Bucamaranga. Um, there's also a few in the coffee region, like Manizales, mm -hmm. uh, Pereira. That, Barranquilla in the Barranquilla, coast. Barranquilla, that a lot of people like. Yeah. Uh, but I can't really comment too much on those because I haven't been. Mm -hmm. um, but I know for a fact I could not live in Santa Marta. I know for a fact I could not live in Bogota. It's mm -hmm. too cold. Um, too cha chaotic. Yeah, traffic is horrible there. Um, 
Santa Marta is too un undeveloped, undeveloped. Mm -hmm. um, for me, Medellin is like almost perfect. Mm -hmm. Like no place is perfect, but you know, for me, the weather is incredible mm -hmm. year round, 75 to 80 during the day. Um, nature, it's, you know, super green here. You have, you feel like you're living in a jungle in the city. Mm -hmm. uh, what else? Just the, the infrastructure. The infrastructure. Mm -hmm. It's has like the best infrastructure in all of mm -hmm. Colombia. At least if you're in Poblado. Yeah. <laughs> Once you get outside of Poblado, it can change uh, pretty rapidly. Mm -hmm. But yeah, in general, like Poblado, Envigado, Samaneta, Lorales, the infrastructure there is, you know, really good. You can find good apartments, Airbnbs for a good price. Mm -hmm. That's what we kind of ran into in Rio. We tried to live there for, you know, one month and it's really extremely hard to find like a good Airbnb there. Yeah. Um, Almost know, like impossible. <laughs> good furniture, good design. Uh, otherwise they're asking like three, four, five K for mm -hmm. like, you know, a normal apartment. Um, for me, like Rio is the perfect city. That's my favorite city. But one huge thing that is missing that kind of makes it hard uh, to live in long term is the apartment thing. Yeah. I think if you bypass that, it's, you know, the best city in the world. But unfortunately, like that's, you know, livability mm -hmm. index, I guess, like that's kind of the most important thing, I guess, is like having a comfortable, um, affordable place to live. Yeah. So we kind of came to the conclusion that that's a better like place to visit. I think if we ventured more to, there's a park called Barra de Tijuca, yeah. which is more residential. Um, it's newer too, so like the, you know, apartments design infrastructure is a little bit newer than mm -hmm. uh, like Copacabana and Ipanema. And it's also cheaper. I think if we give that a shot, like it could be uh, better to live long term. Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, it, we can talk about like the other places we've lived at. Yeah, and we're yeah. also, we haven't even been that many places so like that's yeah. what we want to do this year i think more is um we have a project that we're doing um but after we finish that in like two months we want to go to like buenos aires um where else maybe some other places in south america yeah uh, paraguay uruguay maybe paraguay uruguay mm -hmm. um australia too i really want to go to australia but Mm -hmm. The flight there is so expensive. <laughs> <laughs> and I need a visa. Yeah. So, so, yeah. so, yeah, this year we want to explore a lot more. Mm -hmm. um, and that'll give us more perspective. But, yeah, for now we can give kind of perspective on, like, where we've been. Mm -hmm. Which, I guess, has been Rio, Santa Marta. Um, Italy. We haven't lived in Europe, but we've been to Italy. Yeah, we were there for a and, month. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so I guess you want to talk about Yeah, no, no, at the end, like to answer my the question that I did before, I think I could not live anywhere else in Colombia besides Medellin. But I I've heard book I haven't been, but I've heard Bucaramanga is Bucaramanga it's it's, it's nice. Like Medellin, but Yeah, but it's still not as developed. Like what yeah. I like about Medellin is that it's really like yeah. growing, so you have like what as you were saying, like amazing infrastructure. It's really modern, so like you mm -hmm. can go to amazing places, restaurants, um, and yeah, I think like also the nature thing, it's unbeatable. Like Bucaramanga, it's a little bit warmer. So I don't know if we can do, we could yeah. do like warmer weather. But everything has like good and bad. Like yeah, Medellin is great because it's, you're like in a jungle, it's green, but also yeah. it rains a lot too, which yeah. at times can like get annoying because it could be like, yeah, that's true. last year, I know it was like the, El Nino or La Nina. Yeah. But it's raining every day. Uh, that switched to El Nino, right, this year? Yeah. Um, and it's been way more dry. Yeah, yeah, for sure. So. For sure. Yeah. Well, I, another thing I love about Medellin is just, like, the health and wellness vibes that yeah. that city has. Like, it makes you feel, like, to take care of yourself. They also have, like, gyms everywhere. Uh, like... There is wellness around the city and that makes you take that's, care of yourself yeah. so much that I like that. That's one thing that I really, really don't like about the U.S. And I don't know, I question like if, 
I could live there because that's a huge thing, like the health and, you know, in the U.S. everyone is, not not everyone, but like there's just so much more obesity and it's so much harder to eat healthy because every corner there's a fast food restaurant. Yeah. Um, not even not even just fast food restaurants. It's just like the food there. I feel it's poison. Yeah, it is. Like it is. there are no regulations, and just like just the the American culture of consumism, is just so so like yeah. powerful that there is yeah, no control. Yeah, basically, if you want to live there and be healthy, you have to buy at you know Trader Joe's, Whole Foods, or whatever, um, and cook every meal at home. Otherwise, it's next to impossible to to be healthy there. But also just like the environment that you're in, because if you're around people that are always eating out or that are, because when we're in Iowa, we're like that, like we're also on vacation, but mm -hmm. still it's like the people around you are not eating well. So you just feel like, oh, well, what does it matter? Like these yeah. people are not eating healthy. They're overweight. Like why, why don't I just like enjoy and who cares? But yeah. Yeah, so that's something I like about Medellin, like that mm -hmm. you, if like you feel like you want to be healthy, that you want to take care of yourself, dress well, um, and all it's this. It's great, but again, like everything has a bad side. Yeah. And <laughs> Medellin, in my opinion, takes it a little bit too far, especially yeah. women. Um, yeah. You can probably talk about about that a lot more. Mm -hmm. But yeah, the beauty standards for women is insane. In Medellin, just the expectations and yeah, um, yeah, you can talk about that a lot more, especially because you came from Bogota. You can compare it to yeah, for sure. I came from another city, and as soon as I step foot here, like I feel that I need to, because like all women are beautiful here, and they just like take a lot of time dressing up well, but also like having a lot of beauty procedures. So here, I feel the need of like I have to. Yeah. Uh, inject my face or get plastic surgery or do this and that yeah and um, i don't think foreigners like realize it or notice it mm -hmm. but someone told me one time like at least in poblado uh that like 80 90 percent of girls there have had some sort of like surgery done to their face yeah um so yeah i mean it's it's just like a part of the culture and yeah. i would say that goes back to it's like the, the, the narco, narco culture. Mm -hmm. And that brings us to like another kind of interesting topic that I think you can talk a lot more about because she actually talked or was it like you were in a nail salon mm -hmm. and there just happened to be the mayor of Antioquia there mm -hmm. that was the mayor when it was like the narco days and Pablo Escobar yeah. was kind of a thing. And yeah, you had a lot of interesting conversations with him that i think would be yeah it was super interesting because he was like the not the mayor but the governor of all antioquia during that time and he was talking how hard it was he had to leave the co the country for for a while um and he was like saying just like how much damage the narco culture has made to like the the the, the culture here because people just like like easy money they don't just feel they don't feel like working that much yeah. women like are just like objectified and that's why like women like are just like they just feel valuable according to their appearance and i feel that something worldwide like women we feel valuable according to our appearance in in some mm -hmm. extent but here it's like way 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 more yeah. because because of that narco culture and he was mentioning how how much damage that, that like made to the culture yeah i mean i think you see it a lot less today but mm -hmm. those kinds of like events and things that happen in the culture mm -hmm. really like it kind of sticks with the culture for for decades um yeah. and it's really hard to change you know a culture that um i guess is like that it's worldwide. not value but it's more yeah. that you feel you feel good with yourself when you look good mm -hmm. but then it's like it's different like trying to look good if for a society or from an ex yeah. external perspective and it's just like you have like a normal country and then you have medicine which is just like a whole another 10 times levels of yeah. what like a normal <laughs> yeah i mean pretty... like i just remember when we were traveling Mm, that we came like we were our last stop was brazil and then we came back to yeah. medellin 
and I was feeling like like bad about myself because in Rio like we were like I don't know like uh, yeah. we were dressing up like chill and there was this beach vibe and it was a different vibe and then I stepped foot in Medellin and I feel because we got rid of all of our stuff and then I, I didn't want it to go out because I, I this is funny but I, I feel I felt like I didn't have like good clothes and I just yeah. like immediately I wanted to like oh my god I want to schedule an appointment to uh, get this and this done I, I didn't end up doing anything but I just felt that pressure as yeah that's the great thing about Brazil I love Brazil Brazilian people they're so mm -hmm. chill I would say super down to earth mm -hmm. um, authentic people and yeah it's just like the style there it's so much more relaxed you can wear Mm -hmm. shorts you can wear whatever you want no one no one's really looking at you here yeah. oh my god like if you go anywhere in medicine people are just they're looking at you they're mm -hmm. always looking at you how you're dressed how you, how you look mm -hmm. everything about you um, yeah especially me i don't know what it is like <laughs> if, but i mean people have like a staring problem here like they're always yeah i don't know they're always looking at me but in brazil i yeah I, i'm pretty i look pretty gringo and mm -hmm. yeah i just i didn't feel that there at all yeah yeah i think we can move now to brazil like our experience there we keep yeah. bringing it up and uh, it's just it like as Kel was saying it, it's the perfect place it's just like not leave like you cannot find a place yeah. to live uh, and yeah. but like talking about like the situation with like beauty and so like how people are like people that like women they are beautiful too and like they are also like i've heard they're super into plastic surgery and they are super into like mm -hmm. looking good and all of this but i feel like they're what you're saying is like there you don't feel that sense of people looking at you or you don't feel like you're compared yeah. and like i remember i was doing hot yoga there with a bunch of women that were beautiful in a studio and i felt like they were so nice and like complimenting yeah. each other and you can feel like in the environment that it's it's just different here it's a little bit they're petty I, yeah I, I mean they i feel bad actually for like for you and like <laughs> some other like because they're they can be a little bit like um yeah petty and like not not nice sometimes sometimes yeah yeah mm -hmm. yeah but at the end you're what you attract and yeah i guess we're gonna end up attracting the people we're gonna be we want to be surrounded with yeah yeah and i would say that's i think because mm -hmm. i think about this a lot like i love medellin like I, I love almost everything about medellin um but really long term i don't think i could uh see myself living here long term mm -hmm. uh just for you know some of like those reasons um yeah, I just, I, especially like as I get older and you think about, because I'm 30 now, like about having kids at least yeah. somewhat soon, probably not like that soon, but you know, it's right around the corner because I'm, I'm 30. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, it's def definitely not somewhere that I want to raise kids. You could, I mean, like, thing is like, it's really cheap. You could put them in like a really good private school here, all that. Um, but for me, I don't, I don't want to raise them in this culture. Um, yeah, and also like, like have them be around poverty. Like there, cause there, there is a lot of poverty in Colombia and Medellin. Like you walk down, I mean, a lot of streets and there's beggars or people mm -hmm. selling stuff on, you know, most of them. Yeah. Um, so yeah, for me, like, I don't think I could actually live here long, long term that reason also we mentioned you're never going to feel a part of their culture mm -hmm. um even like, for me coming from another city yeah you're never gonna you're never gonna like yeah feel like accepted it's kind of like we were mentioning before like they're super welcoming and you feel you, you know you feel fine around them because they're friendly they're not going to be rude or whatever um but I would say they're never really going to accept you into their their friend group. Um, and yeah, I don't think that's just like us. That's 
you know, many people that we know, I think have a hard time like integrating into um, the locals, at least. But that's the other great thing about Medellin. Like there are so many people moving here and expats yeah, and true. people like me from other cities that you can also make connections like us. Yeah. We've made a bunch of connections. We've met amazing people. Uh, and I mean, that's that's also good. Like it's not like you're not going to find good people here. Um, you're still going to find mm -hmm. good people. But like what you're saying, like definitely I don't want if I have a girl, I definitely don't want to raise her here. I don't want her feeling uh, yeah, no. objectified or that she needs to follow certain type of beauty standard to feel beautiful. Like if I have a, a, a girl, I want her to feel beautiful and accepted and that she doesn't have to prove like anything to anyone. And I don't feel you get that here, unfortunately. Uh, but that's my perspective again. Someone else can have another one <laughs> because mm -hmm. sometimes when we talk about this, some people like just so don't agree and it's fine. But... It's completely fine. Like everyone has different opinions and perspectives and expectations about life. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I mean, it's that. And also like, also the, as we we're saying before, the easy money culture, like yeah. I would never want, because kids are so moldable mm -hmm. when they're young. That's when they, basically develop who they are as a person mm -hmm. and learn yeah. everything. They're always sucking everything in from their environment, everything around them. So I suppose if you put them in like basically a private school, but that would be a super kind of isolating life. I feel like mm -hmm. that if you just put them uh, in that school. Um, but even then, I think you get part of the, the easy money culture and that, you know, kind of a lot of people here expect i mean but this is another thing too like you saw this in brazil a little bit too you see this in i think cultures that have a really big wealth gap and a lot of yeah. corruption is you see people there that you know live in ipanema so it's not just we're not just talking shit about medicine <laughs> um but you saw people living in like ipanema mm -hmm. um basically people that grew up there their whole lives and they're I don't know, like, they're all going to the beach Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. It's like they don't have jobs. Like, mm -hmm. a lot of them, they, just, they come from old money. And because the wealth gap is so big there, like, if you're if you're w doing well, you're doing well. And basically, you know, if you come from a good family, you don't have to work. Mm -hmm. um, and you can just kind of chill. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, for me, I just, I don't want my kid growing up in that kind of, like, society. I want them to, like always had to work I, but i also feel like that happens everywhere you know like but not in the u.s it, like, it has to like i don't yeah, know of course, because not the percentage though it's to, how you raise the, the kid i feel no. as a parent i mean even in the u.s like i think most rich families have huge expectations on their their kids to to um perform and do something with their lives mm -hmm. yeah you, there there are people like ever but i think the percentage is way smaller there there's a huge emphasis especially in the midwest just on um mm -hmm. yeah working hard being a honest person and i don't know if i i don't know if i could move to the midwest I have to be like a little bit older i think because it's it's really a lot slower pace of life mm -hmm. i think for now i couldn't live there but who knows maybe when i'm older yeah because yeah. really that the people from the Midwest, they're the most honest, I think, good people in, in the world. Yeah. Yeah. There's a lot of bad things about the, like, the weather. I don't like the weather in <laughs> the Midwest and mm -hmm. the winters are pretty brutal, but the people, you cannot beat the, the people yeah. in the Midwest. We covered two big topics. like. <laughs> yeah, those are two pretty... We can, I think, get into like some questions. Uh, mm -hmm. I think yeah. they, a lot of these are from like people that have calls with Louisa or like yeah. people that DM us and like we get these common questions. So mm -hmm. um, we thought it'd be interesting to answer some of these. Yeah, I think I'm, yeah. what I'm going to do is I'm going to, I wrote them here. I'm going to ask them to you because it's mostly people that message me wanting to know things about you or how you've been mm -hmm. doing business or stuff here. And it could be like a rapid thing. Mm -hmm. And and yeah, that can be the end of yeah. the yeah. of this podcast yeah and if if this goes well um i think we might do more yeah podcast style like 
talking about broad topics and yeah maybe even bringing on people you know guests like people that have lived here and yeah yeah so we'll, we'll see how this goes and let us know if you like this mm -hmm. yeah format. and let us know what you think about everything we, we talked about like of course we talk about from our perspective but we understand that people think differently and have yeah and this is different our, perspectives. our experience okay so let's go with these questions that people want to know which type of visa do you have right now i have the investment visa mm -hmm. and i got that so i started with when i first came here tourist visa you can get that for six months and then i did the student visa for six months mm -hmm. but that was before they had the nomad visa which for a year i think for most people like the nomad visa is the best um and then after that i did the investment visa and that's a business investment visa they have a real estate investment visa and a business mm -hmm. investment visa the the business investment visa is a lot lower of a capital requirement when i did it it was like 25k i think right now it's more or less the same maybe like 28k Okay. Yeah. That you have to move into the a bank account here, basically. And then well, right give now you the, it's around with the exchange is like forty thousand. Really? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, because exchange went from five thousand to four thousand this last yeah. year. Yeah. Plus the kinda, it always changed with the minimum wage and it mm -hmm. went up quite a bit. Yeah. So I guess forty k now. Mm -hmm. Um. But yeah, that was pretty. Well, I want to say easy, like. I had to spend $2,000 on a lawyer to do that mm -hmm. process and it took four months, but he did everything for me. Um, and yeah, basically you move the money into an account here. They give you the visa for two, I think it's one or two years. Mm -hmm. And then after that, they want to make sure that you're actually doing business here. So they'll look at like your bank extracts, if you've hired someone, um, and then they'll renew the visa for uh another two years right now i'm renewing mine for the last two years yeah then after that i can apply for a um like citizenship here yeah but this third time it has the, it has been the hardest one yeah they keep like they're it asking for a bunch of harder stuff. and harder yeah. yeah okay next question is airbnb arbitrage still worth it yeah if you find the right deal uh like anything if you find the right deal it's worth it I think it's harder than when I first started, like for sure it's, yeah, it's harder than when I first started five years ago, mm -hmm. but there's also a lot more information now. So I think those kind of like cancel out. So mm -hmm. yeah, you have more information and it's more like well-known, like people have been doing it. Like when I first started, like, especially here, it seems like people were just like, it's kind of like the wild west of mm -hmm. um, Airbnb, you just, threw a place up online and like the bookings came in and is you know it was easy and mm -hmm. yeah but yeah you just got to find the right deal with anything um same with like real estate in the u.s like like it's gone up a lot like 50 percent plus in most areas but you know you just got to find the right deal and probably it's harder now but uh just got to put the work in and mm -hmm. find the right deal because yeah i mean we we found, uh, well, we'll talk about this in like another video and make more videos, but mm -hmm. we found a property to, we're not arbitraging this one, but we found a property to buy. It's a five bedroom house. Yeah. The, another question was this, like, yeah. would you uh, buy property in Colombia? Because yeah, so I think first you had like an opinion about this. At first we were so scared of uh, Petro when he got into power. Mm -hmm. um, so basically like at first, when I first started, like I didn't have much capital. So like I could have, I probably could have bought like a small apartment if I wanted to. Um, but yeah, I didn't have much capital. So I didn't have many, op like I didn't have the option to, to buy, especially here you have to pay all cash or, I mean, in most situations you have to pay all cash unless you find a loan. Um, but yeah, so I started with that. Like I really didn't have the option and um, then we started making more money with the arbitrage, you know, built up my capital reserves we were we actually had another property we had everything set up uh like a seven bedroom house in mm -hmm. poblado and patio bonito we had the contract all ready to go seller financing about to sign that weekend they had the elections picture one and we got 
super scared. And yeah, we didn't do that. And yeah, that shook us for for a while, the Patriot election. And I mean, I think for me, it's easy to see why, like, because you just see what happened to Venezuela next door. Um, and yeah, you think that's that's going to happen here. Mm -hmm. or I mean, it still could, but from what we saw over the last years that he's lost a lot of power. Mm -hmm. um, and I think more than likely it's going to swing back the other way in another election. Um, but you never know. You never know. <laughs> you could buy the election. <laughs> or also there's a lot of poor people that vote for him. So, uh, but yeah, like in general, like Colombia is actually a really conservative country. And this is the first time that they voted for someone um on the left i think pretty much yeah. ever yeah uh but yeah it shocked us at first because this was it's not just someone from the left it's a pretty extreme person he was part of the gorilla um and he had some pretty crazy ideas like basically wanted to do what what happened in venezuela um yeah so we saw things get better uh he lost a lot of power in congress and everything uh, we found the right deal that came up and we just last week we closed that deal actually yeah. uh, five bedroom house in Poblado we're going to try to make it into seven maybe yeah. eight we can squeeze I don't know we'll see and yeah so that'll be a fun project to do yeah also taking into account that like this government even the Petro whatever but this government is really focused on improving tourism uh, yeah. which is which is good at the end like even if whatever happens here or what still is happening yeah. tourism is still like yeah, exactly. booming and, and growing it's booming and they're expecting it to continue to mm -hmm. to boom and grow barring violence getting any mm -hmm. worse which you never know but uh again fico which is now the mayor of Medellin, that he's been he's only been power like uh for a month now but he's mm -hmm. made a lot of changes already Actually, in all of January, like, I haven't heard of any druggings at all yeah. in January. Yeah. So, yeah, we'll see. Yeah. Yeah. Next question. Uh, can you have a business in Colombia and live somewhere else? Yeah, I mean, like, anywhere. Uh, if you set it up right. Any business, any place, if you set it up right with the right employees that you yeah. can trust. Uh, you can have a business anywhere and be somewhere else. Obviously, yeah. it takes some time, especially if you've never run a business before. Like, it took us about two years to really learn how to find the right people uh, to hire. But after that, um, like last year, we were gone for how many months? Yeah. Um, like f four, five, six months. And after we do this project, we're planning on leaving for another, who knows how long. I mean, that's this five, is another months. question. Uh, like, what's up with you? Like, where do you live? <laughs> People don't know where we live. What are we doing? Uh, they're always asking, like, uh, where, where are we? Yeah, so, I mean, we've been, like, a little bit more nomadic. We give up our apartment lease. I uh, can't remember. This is last about a year ago or something yeah, like that June? yeah so less than a year i guess mm -hmm. uh so after that we went to um the u.s to visit my family for a little bit mm -hmm. we went to europe for about a month and a half uh then we went to rio for a month and then we came back to medellin mm -hmm. we had something happen with like we went to the u.s again and we were looking at projects there that didn't work out. Um, that's it's still up in there though. Like that's the thing like with real estate, you have to kind of always be on the lookout. And um, a lot of times at first, like you don't see something that's going to make sense financially or like the right property, the right, we we're looking for land there. Mm -hmm. We didn't see the right one, but you never know. I mean, that that is still kind of an open option for us. Um, mm -hmm. Always actively looking there and the right thing comes up uh yeah. you never know mm -hmm. uh but anyway getting back to that we were there for a couple of weeks looking for for land that didn't work out we didn't find the right 
um, kind of property we're looking for. Came back here, started looking at places, and yeah, that's what everyone thinks that uh, you can find something like right away too. Like it takes some months. It took us. We found the property two months into actually when we were, came back. Mm -hmm. We got spooked because the agent was super aggressive and kind of yeah, <laughs> ruined that for us for a little bit. Um, so we thought we didn't want to do that. But then I came back again to the, because we had the owner's contact. So we were talking with him directly. And I just got to looking at the numbers again. Um, and it made too much sense. Like, we'll cover this more in another video like the numbers and give a tour of their place especially when we finish the project uh but for my calculations like we'll pay back the entire because we pay cash for this property mm -hmm. we'll pay back that entire amount plus cost of a renovation mm -hmm. um worst case scenario i have it at four years best case scenario i think we can do it in two years which is pretty insane to think about that's mm -hmm. that return on investment that you pay yeah. back the entire cost of the house in two years yeah um but yeah i guess getting back to the <laughs> <laughs> let's do another what was the question yeah <laughs> let's get to it yeah like what we're, 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 we're doing with our lives basically yeah like, so yeah we're here to do that basically until we finish that we'll be here I think another two months yeah right right now we're here in Guatepe. um got this rental for a month um but yeah again so after that I think in argentina buenos aires for a little bit and then we don't really know it could be paraguay it could be brazil for a little bit again uh recently i don't know why or how but australia caught my eye a lot and I think that'd be super cool to do Australia and then we were always kind of planning a summer in Europe again too because yeah. we didn't discover or we didn't go to that many places actually in Europe so we want to kind of venture to more countries there but basically we don't know we don't know we're, we're kind of nomads and and we like you do real estate so what you were saying yeah. you're you always have to be on the lookout and your life like goes or moves yeah. around it yeah i think when you're like an entrepreneur like your mind's always kind of working like anywhere we go my mind's always thinking like looking at like these buildings and like for rent signs for sale signs like mm -hmm. kind of running the numbers like how much money could i make here is, yeah, this, a good, is this a good market mm -hmm. um there's one that's still kind of interests me because the rentals there are so horrible, like the, the options, and they charge a lot of money. I think if you found the right system there, you got the Brazilian ID that you need, tax ID. Mm -hmm. um, it's definitely an interesting market. Yeah. Along with like a lot of other markets in South America are booming right now. Buenos Aires, um, Lima, Peru. Really right now, I think that Airbnb boom is outside the U.S. Anytime I look at the U.S. market, it so much occupancy, and mm -hmm. from what I can see in most of those markets. Uh, but you look at calendars here, and almost anywhere I look, actually, in the world outside the U.S., like South America, Europe, Australia, even um, Bali. You know, those markets are in full boom mode right now. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I have, because our time is up, I have the last question and is if you accept investors on your projects. Oh, that's a good question, actually. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, I think investors, I think partners, though, I don't think I would ever want to take on a partner. Mm. I think it really complicates things too much, like having, and we kind of saw it with this last house we bought he had a partner and oh, it made yeah. the whole process so much more difficult and this is when the partner was on board with everything the purchase price mm -hmm. he, he agreed with everything but we it should still make was, like a prince we should make a video talking about the whole process yeah. of buying property here yeah, we all can. of our experience yeah. mm -hmm. but that made the process way more difficult and just imagine if the partner didn't agree with uh the terms of 
anything, anything in the in the deal. And it could have totally thrown the the deal off and we just move on. Um, so yeah, I don't think I would ever take on a partner. And especially, yeah, too, because like, why, why would you take on a partner if, if you're confident in yourself and your abilities and how much money you can make? Mm-hmm. Why accept a 50-50 partner? It makes no sense. Um, yeah, for me, I'm know what we can make, know our abilities, and it doesn't make sense for us to split the equity, equity 50%. Mm-hmm. Um, investors, that's another topic, like that's different, like you're just paying someone back basically. And yeah, we're, we're always open to that. We did actually find someone that can help us with a, a loan. Mm-hmm. This property we didn't purchase with a loan, we were on a tight timeline. But we did find someone actually Someone that reached out to Louise on TikTok and then we connected uh, that actually can offer financing in the U.S. and loan money in not just Colombia, but any foreign country. Mm-hmm. So that's something super interesting that we're looking at and exploring. Um, and rates are slightly higher than what they are in the U.S., but they're still way lower than what you would find here. Here, if you get a loan, it's 15%. And Plus not it's even impossible just, for foreigners. Yeah, not even just fifteen percent. It's pretty much impossible yeah. to get one as a foreigner. Uh, so that's something in like a really interesting kind of new thing that we discovered that could open this market up a lot more for us. And yeah. and you too, if if you want, um, have ever wanted to like buy something here in Columbia, but maybe you don't want to pay all cash because that's you know mm-hmm. putting two five hundred a million cash. That's when you look at opportunity cost of capital, especially, it makes it a hard decision and a decision that a lot of times doesn't make sense. When you look at opportunity cost of capital and what you could do with that capital mm-hmm. in other areas, it could be the stock market, it could be investing in a business somewhere else or real estate somewhere else. When you look at having to pay all cash here, yeah, a lot of times it just doesn't make sense. So yeah, if you thought about buying property here and but haven't been been able to find a loan um yeah we can put you in contact with him and yeah and we can talk about this i think more in like in another one because we're pretty tight on time Uh, and we can give you more details on that Um, but yeah i don't know if you want to wrap it up yeah (laughs) yeah so i think that does it for this podcast let us know how you like this kind of format um if you want us to do it again what questions you would have for the, the next one if we do it. Uh, just comment that below. And But yeah, we're going to wrap it up. And um, yeah, hope you enjoyed that that content. And <laughs> yeah. yeah. Nice. Okay, ciao.